Hi, we're the Werner family in Vicenza, Italy. We want to wish our family in Center Reach, New York, a happy holidays. Say happy holidays. Happy holidays! Welcome back everyone to our holiday special. Superstorm Sandy completely destroyed the homes of thousands of folks in our region and thousands alone of Long Island residents, ruling out repair and leaving them with no choice but to rebuild. Reporter Carolyn Fertino visited with one such family at the Corbett's of Island Park and she tells us how they use their personal loss to bring their family closer together. A fourth of wave just knocked the three doors open and just went right through the house. We didn't really know how bad it was until we actually came here and opened the front door and saw the devastation inside the house. Bill and Kathy Corbett have lived on Waterford Road in Island Park since they started a family. Their home rests just 100 yards from the water's edge. When Hurricane Sandy's raging storm surge hit, it consumed their home in several feet of standing water. Flooded bedrooms, knocked out electrical systems, and destroyed memories were all that was left. We heard about their devastating experience from what used to be the family room. It's now reduced to framing and floorboards. You look at the news and you see these kind of things happening in other places and other poor souls. When that, you know what? Now it's your turn and you, you got to wrap your head around it. And it's, it. When you first see it, it's tough. It's tough to wrap your head around it. Then you got to look at your kids and you say, okay, all right, you know, me and her, we can sleep on a park bench, but, uh, you know, you got to take care of your kids. Reduced to rubble, the family gathered whatever they could salvage and went to stay with relatives in Deer Park, Long Island. From there, they moved to a hotel in Oyster Bay while they wait for a lease on a rental house. The Corbett say walking away from their demolished home and life's possessions was the hardest part of moving forward. I was kind of repressing myself. Like, I, I wanted to be upset, but I couldn't, at the time, I couldn't bring myself to be upset, you know, you know what I mean? And um, it was a lot of, you know, it was really emotional for me and for a lot of people in this area. The Corbett's have been a part of Mothers of Super Twins, or most, since they found out they were pregnant with triplets 15 years ago. The nonprofit organization was established 25 years ago to provide financial and emotional support to families with multiple births. The Corbett's say most was the first group to reach out to them in the storm's aftermath and offer to help in any way they could. They really helped us feel a lot better about our situation, that we weren't alone that we had people we could talk to and turn to, you know? And it was really a good thing for me, and I think for my whole family. Every year during the holiday season, most conducts the Holiday Adopt a Family program. The support forum gathers donated food, clothing, books, toys, and other necessities and delivers them to families who are in need. Maureen Doolin Boyle is the founder of the most organization, and she says that this year the donations were especially crucial to the Corbett's and hundreds of other families suffering from tremendous loss. We brought food and uh, cleaning supplies, um, a little bit of cash, um, and um, things that we had actually around the most office and around our homes. We asked our friends, neighbors, if they had anything that uh, would fit them. We asked what their immediate needs were, like such as boots, shoes, sneakers. The boys had absolutely no clothes, only what was on their backs. The families selected for the Holiday Adopt a Family program are handpicked by most leaders who locate parents that have fallen on hard times. Most will discreetly find out what their basic needs are and then put together a package specially designed for the family. All donors and recipients remain anonymous, with the exception of a letter that says an angel heard about your family and wanted to make your holiday special. It's exceptionally humbling to be in need, uh, especially as Kathy had mentioned that they, um, they were usually the person out donating and serving at the soup kitchen and now they were someone who was going to the soup kitchen and, and looking for food and for used clothing. It's exceptionally humbling. But the Corbett's admit that what started as a story of heartbreak became one of family resilience. I hated the fact that I needed it, but the fact that 
that they did it and that the kids right away and one of the things didn't fit one of the kids and, and he said the firehouse is collecting clothes mommy when we go tomorrow can I bring it to the firehouse someone else might need it again I know I'm doing my job because they remember how to give back and we see that from a very difficult experience comes goodwill from a child we're going to take a quick break now but when we come back we're going to tell you about hundreds of volunteers who are bringing a party to hospitals and schools to try and spread some holiday cheer. Hi, I'm Hunter Martin at the Lonsdale Regional Medical Center in Lonsdale, Germany. I just want to say Merry Christmas to everybody down at the Jersey Shore. Hi, this is the Farbers in Stuttgart, Germany. We want to wish everybody uh, happy holidays back in New Jersey and uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Hello, my name is Captain Marie Antwi Walker. I'm here in Bagram, Afghanistan, serving with the 333rd Military Police Brigade. I'd like to say happy holidays to my mother. Happy holidays.